shoes. Anna knew M was going to make it big someday. M had a flair for painting. Her colors on canvas attracted people like the magical piper of Hamelin. She could draw anything and make it come to life even in its stillness. Like all the artists of the world, M was cursed in many ways. Her menial job, where she worked to support her passion, paid her meagerly that rent and ration would eat away. So Anna would sometimes joke about how M should get hold of someone rich from the upper side to pay for her talents, like most of her artist friends did. M wouldn't mind the bantering. She'd always answer back wittingly that if she were to marry anyone, be it from upper side or lower side of the society, it would be only for money. They both knew it wasn't true. M was a die-hard romantic and unfortunately unlucky in love. She always fell for the wrong ones. She'd tell herself that she was strong but she was vulnerable. Her worst and the best trait. She refused to be corrupted by the ways of the world around her. She refused to be influenced by the world's definition of love. She still believed in good men. And what a turn of event. She met one online. Oh boy, there was something charming about these upper side men. Anna was thrilled at first. She did warn M about the stiff neck society. There were snobs whose wives and mothers were more snobbish than their men. Anna knew M was too docile and naive for that world. It was a date she had been looking forward to for weeks. She squeezed everything she had saved for a dress. Anna thought she'd look good on. The economy was terrible, especially for her than the country. She could have borrowed Anna's, but M and Anna were two poles apart in terms of size. M was a petite woman of mid-twenties. You usually see in housekeeping magazine with apron and a ladle. While Anna had a robust build of an athlete, all thanks to the sedentary job she worked for to support her creative writing tuitions. M's date from Upper Side was a chef by profession, who could quote her favorite Dickinson rhyme by rhyme. In fact, he wooed her with this quote, Forever is composed of nows. They bonded well over the fact that both believed in dignity of labor. Of course, she did not tell him about the number of times she worked as a dishwasher for the same restaurant he owned so that she could buy a decent set of brushes and varnish. The man was an activist disguised in a white apron, voicing against the capitalist fighting climate change. Who wouldn't fall for that? She had a habit of attracting crazy men, falling for them easily more than they deserved. She had a habit of overlooking the red flags. She'd always say, this one's different, hoping against hope for the sake of love. Her only excuse? An artist needs love to create an art. Somehow her roommate Anna was positive this time, for she'd seen M glow. Love was such a beautiful color on people. It was stupid and illogical, yet the love bug had made her friend a lovely host. Manifest positive vibes, she told M from the very beginning. And don't come crying again if it doesn't work. So the following Sunday evening, M was dressed to paint the town red. But it was her shoes that gave away the modesty of her class. She was glad her date had decided for the evening. Her shoes were hidden under the shade of dusk and a frilly dress. It wasn't her fault though. The pair was the only good shoes she had owned and to get a new one would create a hole in her pocket. They finally met in person. Being a painter 
as observant as she was she noticed his features first drawn by crick nose adenai jawline and his lazy brown eyes and felt hexed by the proper consolidation of the element on his face and toned body he was absolutely flawless or was it her love that exaggerated his beauty he was polite to the waiters and had the etiquette of typical upper side boys the warm energy between them made her mellow her voice sounded strange even to herself her high pitch voice was soft and calm the conversation was all one sided he spoke and she listened like it was a sacred speech of socrates she was bewitched by his baritone voice that commanded absolute attention his laughter was a musical ringing in the open space that she had to place her hand on her heart to hide the drumming beat her heart was now a frail organ her face a colored palette that easily gave away her secret when the night matured he spoke not of knowledge that she knew of but of things that she was deprived to the least for she belonged to the provincial and he spoke in polished english with complicated french cuisine names she noticed her coarse hands on the linen tablecloth her bare wrist and neck was a mockery of her own class not to mention the only pair of good shoes she was wearing hidden under the dress the apprehension of her reality pulled her back to the ground what was she thinking his radiant face his white shirt undone sleeve button and the golden watch all screamed the gap between her class and his she could not help but compare herself with him the worst feeling she had experienced second to love was this sense of being intimidated by the confidence of his class and wealth to this day her own poverty never bothered her for she considered it to be a subjective topic she thought materialistic things are superfluous and that her talent was enough he changed everything She curled her toes inside her shoes when a gorgeous woman patted his back to start a conversation. This new lady was a lawyer and had soft white hands. Em knew by the movement of her eyebrows that she was being scrutinized harshly by this lady. She felt naked in front of them, exposed for dissection. Her frilly dress that she had loved so much felt like a cheap thrift clothing screaming for attention she looked around her this wasn't a crowd this wasn't a people she asked herself again what was she thinking confidence to her was a luxury she had bought with a dress and yet it was soiled by the shoes she looked at him his radiant smile and posture the way he carried himself indicated the innate confidence she couldn't help but envy every glance he showered to this new lady why did he fancy her a struggling painter from the lower side or was it just pity her throat was parched with despondency she smiled all she could to guard a self-loathing the lady finally left but not before revealing the history of their relationship there was an awkward silence em was too spent to be surprised by the revelation she missed her warm bed and her comfortable loneliness where nobody tried to hurt her with reality seeing her lost and dazed her date decided for a walk when she returned home that night the gallant gentleman kissed her good night promised to call her for the second date but she knew that was it she wanted to say goodbye but only good night escaped her lips her face cracked a sad smile he could not decipher the emotion behind it perhaps this is how the have nots are blessed 
If the haves are blessed with choice and confidence, the have-nots can feel anything and everything. And to feel is a blessing, don't you think? She watched his snazzy pair of leather Oxford walk away from her, her heart crumbling with every step he took. She wanted to scream and ask, why did he choose her? But he was long gone towards the dark corner, far away from her reach. She sat by the foot of the staircase, took her shoes off and contemplated at the turn of events. Her bare, dry hands did not look so bad after all, in a shabby apartment. The sole of her shoes were already breaking off. She looked at her shoes and her untidy apartment. They looked good together. The shoes complemented the worn-out apartment. Her toes were red and sore. That night, her roommate Anna found her sobbing by the staircase. Alaram to see her pensive, Anna asked about M's date, though the answer was already raw on her face. M blinked her twinkling eyes and replied softly. My shoes hurt, Anna. My shoes hurt. The End <laughs>